the two Cubans are in charge of anything. It's usually called a conspiracy, but um, I appreciate the opportunity to share the co-chair or to be the ranking member on this today. I'm thank you all for being here. I'm I'm very happy to see the president uh, has uh, made these nominations to Honduras and, and to Jamaica. Senators Menendez and Kane and myself sent a letter urging that he nominate qualified individuals uh, throughout the Western Hemisphere. These are two important posts, starting with Honduras. Um, you know, the pandemic put more than 400,000 Honduras out of work, and then uh, two hurricanes that caused almost $2 billion in damages to a country that uh, really couldn't afford it. And then on top of that, the energy sector is actually one of the least efficient in the entire region. I think uh, it cost them about $450 million annually uh, with 29% uh, of energy produced lost in the transmission. So it's, it's a very serious problem. They have a new government. And, uh, and I hope that this new, new government will take the opportunity to implement uh, common sense reforms uh, that will make it a place that's more amenable to foreign investment. Uh, those things that I think could end up uh, resulting in things like nearshoring uh, of U.S. supply chains, which uh, we talk about that all the time. Uh, why aren't most things, more, if more things were being made in nations like Honduras closer to our country, we would have a more secure supply chain and we'd be less reliant on disruptions coming from other regions of the world. So I, I hope the new president will, will follow that path and, and not the example that was set by her husband when he was the president and, and cozied up to Chavez in Venezuela and Raul Castro in Cuba. And, and uh, you know, I am concerned that she has uh, openly suggested the idea of perhaps switching recognition from Taiwan to the People's Republic of China. So Ambassador Dogu, if you're confirmed, I hope you'll use your extensive uh, previous diplomatic experience, including in very difficult places uh, like Nicaragua, uh, to help uh, make clear and, uh, and have influence over the, Honduran, the new Honduran government as it uh, seeks to, to navigate and, and these challenges, and, and, and in particular that we emphasize how important it is that that recognition of Taiwan not be switched. Uh, when it comes to Jamaica, it's the largest English-speaking nation uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, has very strong cultural, historical, economic ties to this country, and particularly to South Florida. We have a very robust Jamaican-American and, and Jamaican uh, expat community that has, does business in our state but remains citizens of Jamaica. And um, they are uh, undergoing a pretty ambitious reform program under Prime Minister Holness, and their public debt fell below 100 percent in GDP for the first time. Very impressive. They're, the United States is their largest trading partner, and, and that does include uh, companies that now provide products that form the very basis of exactly the kind of sustainable and secure supply chains we need more of. So they have very strong economic relationship with the United States, with my home state, but they are suffering the consequences of, of the illegal drug crisis uh, that we're facing in this country. Its location geographically makes it uh, ripe for drug trafficking, and they've been a very strong partner. Jamaica's been a very strong partner in countering uh, these drug trafficking networks, and obviously, we should continue to do more to bolster their capabilities to do that. So if confirmed, Assemblyman Perry, I hope you'll build on your experience, not just in the, in the legislature, but, um, but also your deep ties to Jamaica to help foster and continue to build on that U.S.-Jamaica partnership. When it comes to Portugal, it's a, obviously a NATO ally, and actually one that's really done quite a bit. They, they've contributed significantly towards the operations in Afghanistan, the Baltic Air Policing Mission, uh, Rapid Reaction Naval Strike Force, um, and so if you're confirmed, Levine, you'll oversee in a very important relationship for the United States at a very tense time, obviously, uh, when it comes to NATO and uh, recent and ongoing events in Ukraine. And finally, uh, Dr. Lipstadt the, is the nominee to, the US, to be the U.S. Special Envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism. I believe you'll be the first person nominated to this position since my uh, Special Envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism act became law in January of 2021, which made this position subject to Senate confirmation. And my intent when I authored that law was to ensure that the Special Ombud would be a nonpartisan figure to develop and implement the department's policies to address the, the uh, evil poison, the ancient and evil poison of anti-Semitism uh, around the world. And so you clearly bring considerable experience and, and breadth and scope of experience in and on Holocaust matters, on history, on, on you authored numerous books and countless articles on the topic, both on the Holocaust and, and anti-Semitism. Anti I'm mean, really eager to learn how, if you're confirmed, um, you intend to uh, continue uh, 
the, the, our tradition of nonpartisan approach to America's anti-Semitism policy, because I truly believe it's one that is shared by the overwhelming majority of people in American politics, in American government, and, and in America. And uh, I'd like to note, if I can, Mr. Chairman, my colleague, Senator Langford, provided a statement regarding this nomination, and I ask that it be included in the record. Without objection. And with that, I, I want to thank all of you for being here today and for your willingness to serve your country. Thank you.